Hi, Fred Wagner here. Uh, I'm back with uh, another painting tip from Papa's Painting Tips. This is dedicated to uh, my grandchildren and my children. My grandchildren call me Papa, so I thought, what a what an awesome name. Now you're going to ask me, why are you giving away free painting tips? Well. Jesus gave his only son on the cross for us, for our salvation. Why can't I give away some free painting tips? And uh, why don't we get started? As you can see, I'm working on something here. And I want to do a little short video with just a few little tips to help those learning. Something to give back to others and uh, to help others learn and grow. Let's get going. Hi, how you doing? We're back here working on a painting here that uh, I've been doing a little bit for a week or so. Not even a week, a day or two. And uh, it's of a hummingbird as you can see. We've been blessed with uh, hummingbirds coming on our deck uh, for the hummingbird feeder, finally. Uh, two years. <laughs> but they're finally starting to come around and they found the feeder. So. And we enjoy sitting out there watching them, so I thought I'd paint a hummingbird. And as you can see, I already put some work into it. I laid down the base in uh, Payne's Gray, and uh, I've laid down the ruby throat. This is a ruby-throated hummingbird. And I've also laid in some browns and uh, over the grays in the face and out onto the beak. Now... I'm also going to put some blues on top of that because it's more of a black and then his head is an emerald green and down his sides. And today what I'm working on is I'm working on a piece of uh, Drew Blair's synthetic paper. Shout out to Drew. He's an awesome teacher. And I wish I had the uh, fortune of taking one of his courses, but I haven't yet. Uh, so I've been just trying to teach myself how to use the synthetic papers, uh, erasing techniques with the Euro pens and aggressive erasers, soft erasers, scraping with X-Acto tools and blades, and also even at times just using a toothpick. I don't have a dowel rod right now. Wow. That was that's one of the things that Drew has in some of his kits, a dowel rod. I'm going to give that a try soon. We're working with Createx Illustration Paint and uh, I'm spraying it through my Iwata uh, HPB. It's not a micron, it's a B. It's got a uh, 0.2 millimeter needle nozzle and it works really good for the uh, Createx Illustration Paint. A lot of people have been asking about um, reducing the illustration paint. You can. Uh, today I've been working with it uh, non-reduced with 25 PSI uh, pressure. And it seems to be spraying really well. I have found that uh, what works the best with it is to lightly spray and... Um, then clean your tip very regularly. Clean your needle tip. Big important thing even out of this bee. So it, it works really well. I'm going to do a little more work with the brown that's in here. It's a mixture of burnt umber and sepia. And then I'm going to switch over colors to the emerald green color and lay in a base of the green and then work back into it and erasing and it's uh, what we're working on today so let's get started I've got a mixture of sepia smoke and burnt umber in here no reduction at all just straight and I've got my like I said before my PSI is up at 25 and I'm constantly cleaning off the needle tip 
two, two things to do when you're cleaning off the needle tip. If you're very used to airbrushing, you can pick the needle tip with your fingernails and your fingertip. Or you can take a Q-tip swab, hollow bodied, dip it in water, feed it onto the end so the open body goes over the needle tip and give a little twist. Completely cleans all that paint off. I don't know. Yeah, you can see a little bit of brown on there that it just cleaned off. All right. Then I will give it a quick spray on a rag that I've got over to the side. Starting my pressure away from the painting, I will turn towards the painting and lightly pull on that trigger. And I'm studying my reference at the moment because I want to make sure I get this right. Yeah, be very gentle on this paper. I'm putting a very, very fine line. And this is what I've found that after a couple seconds of spraying, you want to clean that tip again. Um, I've used, I use many different types of paints. I use Createx, Createx Illustration, Wicked Colors, I've got E-Tac, um, and I've got, I've got quite a few paints in here. I've also got Golden High Flow, a couple bottles of that, not a lot, but and it, it all depends on what substrate I'm painting on for what I'm using. The thing with uh, doing this on the synthetic paper, which is actually plastic, uh, is the fact that it can be scratched into and erased into very easily and uh, manipulated very easily. Right now I'm just doing little dots by flexing my fingertip. I'm giving it, well, let's see, let's see if I can do this. I'm giving it little pulsations with my fingertip to get it to spray right now. See, it's starting to clog up and rather than continuing to pull back on that trigger, I'm going to give it a little shot to clean it. And see, now it's spraying again. And I'm just doing a little just actually taking the joint of my finger and doing this. I'm not pulling back with the tip of my finger because a lot of times you lose control on your spray when you're like this and it also begins to hurt your hand. So I, I overlap a little bit and I just use that little motion on my fingertip. And again, just pulling slightly back. And there's my line. And you can pull back from the surface. Nope, I'm up above. Let me show you again. See, I'm just giving little, little pulls with my fingertip. Alright, see now, only a couple seconds, now I want to clean that tip again. With ETAC, I don't find this as necessary, but that little bit of my fingertip movement after just cleaning that and now I, like I said I'm spraying 25 psi 25 psi uh, and no reduction and it's giving me nice nice flow today I'm getting more and more used to using this illustration paint and this is a real strong shadow under this beak here. Okay, we're back to no paint again, so we're going to give that a little spray. There we go. Starts drawing that paint up there again. Give it a nice clean line. I'm working small areas. Then another thing that uh, when you're painting with this is you've got the ability to work back into your piece in that. So you can 
lightly mist over with some color. Okay. Now you're not going to notice much on the camera, but there is a little bit of fine mist on there. That's spraying to darken that in. And then we can go back in. And if you see there's bubbles in my cup, that tells me two things. Bubbles in the cup is the head is loose, possibly. So crank that down. You know, it shouldn't use pliers, finger tight, but you know, give it a good turn. And it seals this so there's not as much air pushing back in. Also, it could be your tip is clogged. So you wanna make sure, again, you, this is what I'm stressing today, keeping that needle tip clean. Right. Put the protective cap back on so if, it, if you knock your airbrush uh, off of your holder, you're not gonna damage your needle. Been there, done that. All right, now. I'm going to use the, an aggressive eraser and I'm lightly going to just give a little bit because this is uh, such a smooth plastic surface you can pull that paint way deep down and I don't want to take too much. I'm also going to use the Tombow eraser very lightly just to take off a little bit of that surface. Tombow eraser is a little smoother. It's kind of right in between a pencil eraser and uh, an aggressive eraser. Aggressive is more like your old time uh, pen and ink erasers. So. What I'm doing here is I'm going to remove just some. And the longer you leave this set, now those are pretty strong highlights in there. And I don't, I'm not going to keep them that strong. But what I'll do is I'll mist over these with a little brighter red. Because I don't want to keep building with my browns because then that's going to be way too dark under there. And, uh. And all this is done with layers of light red, then I mixed a red and burnt umber, and then I mixed, did the edging and the little details with the burnt umber and sepia mix. So, we're going to clean out this real quick, and we're going to switch over to the emerald green. I want to uh, let, let this brown harden a little bit and uh, cure up. Now it has a, a long window on it, uh, like three hour window, but also you can come back a day or two later on this synthetic paper and uh, still manage to get some paint off of that surface. So I'm just taking some distilled water here, pouring it into my cup, rinsing the cup, till it's fairly clean. I'm going to go to a green. It's a little bit lighter value, but it's very close in value to the paint that was in there. So I don't have to do a real, real fine clean on it. Right now I'm just spraying the water through using a little back pressure. I'm doing that by putting my fingertip over the not protective nozzle cap and just lightly giving it air and pulling back a little bit to create some bubbles. All right, that should be pretty good in there. Dump out the rest of the water. Spray off the rest of the paint. Yep, cup looks pretty clean. And I'm going, like I said, I'm going to switch over to an emerald, light emerald green. In fact, um, I'm probably going to use a moss green because if I'm doing light layers, 
it's going to seem pretty bright anyways in value. Uh, these are transparent paint, paints, so they build up. Or should I use a viridian? Actually, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with the viridian green. It... Uh, it's a little closer. It's actually, it's got a little more yellow. The Viridian's got a little more blue in it. Now I'm going to stick with the moss green. I'm going to stick with that. And maybe I'll put two drops of yellow into the moss green. Shaking up my bottle. Create trucks illustration. This is moss green. Now today... Every time I'm opening my caps, it's like a volcano of paints coming out. The The barometric pressure here must be uh, rising because we've got some rain coming in. So that, that, believe it or not, that affects how the paint comes in and out. Right, I'm going to just put a couple drops because I'm not working in a big area right now. That's it, four drops. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow into this to mix up a, a little bit brighter. And this is uh, the illustration yellow. So I put four drops of the green. Now I'm going to put in probably three drops of the yellow into the moss green. See what I mean? <laughs> I just opened that cap. So move away from your painting. And when I opened that, it just shot paint all over my finger out of the bottle. That's what I'm talking about. You got to be careful. You got to watch. Watch, watch, watch. Right. I put four drops of the moss. So one, two, three drops of the yellow. It's probably all I'm going to go. I say emerald green color. Uh, there is no emerald green in here. Now what I like to do is I'll take a soft tip paintbrush here and I've, ha I've got it sitting in water from rinsing before. So I just wipe that off on my rag. Give a little mix in my cup. I'm mixing in the cup. And then I will gently give it a little bit of back pressure so what's in the, the head of it mixes back into the cup. And then I'll go over on my rag on the side here, give a little spray to be able to get down to that mixed color that I made. And give it a little test spray. Oh, perfect. That's perfect color. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly mist into this, this green, misting over that brown that I already put down. I don't care if it overlaps because there's green on his whole head. And you see that yellow just popping through. Beautiful color, beautiful. Coming out awesome. And there's a little bit under the eye here. See where I made those scratch marks a minute ago? Now they're bright highlights on top of that green. Always start your air away. And spray in. Now he does have down on his body the same emerald green. And since it's in the cup, I'm going to lightly mist in on his body some of the areas that this green is in. I don't have to be detailed. I'm not painting detail line work at the moment. Now he's also got over his wing edge. Now while I'm painting here, I'm spraying at this top edge of this wing, but I'm spraying down. I don't want to shoot my greens all over in here, even though green's going to be in my background right now. I want to concentrate keeping it inside my line. Now you can put a uh, shield up there to help prevent it. You can do uh, frisk it. I, I'm lazy. I like to work this. I like to work without 
shields. I don't always care, especially in wildlife paintings, to have that hard of an edge. So, alright, we're going to put a little more down in this area, the, the shoulder of the wing, because it's a little bit darker value there, and a little darker here, coming down by his tail. He, you can't see the tail in there, so. And then he's got some underneath his wing on these feathers here. And there's some in here. All right. You can really see that color popping on that video. That's nice. All right. And then I'm following this. I wanted to keep it close. I didn't want to spray this real far away and I don't have a cameraman sitting with me to sit there and adjust. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful color. Just coming out really nice. That's another thing I found with this synthetic paper is it's your colors stay vibrant. Very vibrant. You almost got to dull them down <laughs> to make it more what nature is. Some of, some of these birds God created are so beautiful. So much color. It's amazing. It's amazing the varieties and the beautiful. I don't know if you heard that. I, did, I just heard a, almost like a strain on the paint. And then I heard a little bit of a spitting sound, a little t sound. That's telling me I'm starting to get tip dry on the needle tip. So, like I said, every few set minutes, not even, every 30 to 40 seconds, I would say, anymore, is give that little tip. Something I grew up learning anyways, uh, back in the days doing airbrush t-shirts. It, uh, we never had paints that had the capability of continuous flow. You always dealt with tip dry. So I'm very used to it and it doesn't bother me too, too much. I just don't like when it spits on me. And I don't know if you can see right in here, there's a couple little dots of where that just spit on me. So what I can do, you wanna leave it dry a little bit. You can take your X-Acto blade and lightly pick those off. It's best when it's a little dry. See, that wasn't dry enough right there. So because of it, it smudged it a little bit. And now it's darker. I'll leave that. I'll leave it for now. I don't want to screw it up. I don't want to make a big mess. So be patient leave it dry up then you'll be able to pick that right off and on this the illust or on this uh, synthetic paper you've got that advantage to you that you can take something and pick it off like that all right we're going to go back in now with the eraser i let it set up for just a pinch before i start working on it i'm going to use the ag aggressive eraser and go and go into here because there's little highlights, little tiny ones. And I don't want to scratch down to the board, so I don't want to use Exacto or down to the. Right. And we're going to do little. I mean little. I, I've got this sharpened down. And what I've done is I've taken and sharpened my tip. And if you go too far with your tip here on this eraser, it's going to be brittle and bend. So if you take, I've got an 800 grit piece of sanding pad. Uh, this is Norton uh, soft touch sanding pad. And it's uh, P1000 to P800. And if you go back and forth on it, you can file that tip of that eraser 
down to a nice little point and give yourself a nice little tip on there to work in tight little spots. Okay. I also have a couple others. This I've got filed down to a chisel point. All right. This I use for doing tight lines and I'll give a motion like that to give your lines. And this one's blunt so it'll give me a uh, broader pattern and erasing area. So We're going to go back in here and we're just going to pick out some highlights. Now here's another little tip. If you've got very oily skin like I do, take a photo, photo editing or uh, photo processing. Back in the days when we used 35 millimeter film and you were processing film, they sell these cotton gloves that, and I've cut out the tip of the thumb and the forefinger so I can control my airbrush. But this part of my hand, I a lot of times rest right on it. And so I don't put oil back onto this surface, onto this plastic. You'll find this, a lot of people do this for automotive. I'll use that on my hand so I guard it from getting oils. All right, we're going to keep working these little highlights. I'm just touching a little bit and giving a slight drag. I don't know if it's hard to see, but I'm giving little tiny bumps, uh, highlights, and it's making that, giving that illusion that light is reflecting off of that spot. And this is, they've got such beautiful uh, little details in their fur. And I'm following on this one, I've got my reference picture over here on my iPad. And I'm just looking at the iPad and following the reference picture. Doing these little details. And uh, you don't, if you're going for photo realism, you want to be as exact as you can. On this, there's so many varieties within the species of hummingbirds, and there's so many uh, little details that are different between one bird to the next. So I don't have, I'm not worried about staying exact to this hummingbird. Okay, I'm also gonna clean up this specula a little bit to bring out that highlight on his eye. I'm allowing some overspray to still be on there, but I'm also going right back to the board to get that eye, that sharp, bright part there. Like I said, I clean up these a little bit. There's a little more detail over here. Now if you scrape and scrape and keep working on it, you're going to go right back down to the board. Or the, I keep saying board because I was, was working on illustration board for quite some time there. Uh, I just got this synthetic paper and I'm having fun playing with it. All right. Now I got some highlights worked in here. I'm going to go with my second layer of this green. To give a little more depth to those feathers. Since it's been sitting there, I know I cleaned the tip already, but I'm still going to do it again. Give a little spray on my cloth over to the side. Starting my air away from the board so I don't spit paint. And I'm going to go back up here and spray in some more green. This time I'm going to be a little more detailed in areas. All right. And now we're going to mist back over 
and being this is transparent paint you get the ability to build layers and darken as you go with transparents they will darken and darken until they match their exact value in the bottle and I'm pumping the trigger to try to get little tiny spots in here my paint's starting to dry on that tip so I dip it in a little water this is also a little safer doing this way because if you do pick the needle you have a, you can bend that tip it's so so delicate in there All right. We're going to darken up this color here and darken up. Pay attention now to your edges because you don't want to obliterate it, everything you just painted in. So right now I'm going little tiny dots of paint and little lines, detailed lines. Build up that detail in that head. Look at how, how vibrant that is and how beautiful. And when you missed over where you already erased, it's putting down your color value from what first was laid down, but where it oversprays, you're getting a darker value because it, it, it's layering that transparent. I, if you noticed, I just turned that away. I'm going to put in a little bit of paint in here, like so. So, as you can see, with that 25 psi, this is still spraying fairly decent. And with no reduction, now I'm going to tone down these scratches in here. A little bit of green. I don't know if you heard it, but it just gave me a little spit sound again. Alright, now in my reference, I got a little more. little more highlights in here on these little spots so I'm gonna go back I just sprayed over so I gotta be really really delicate here okay. these little they're just a couple little highlight spots on top of these and I don't want to just scratch the whole thing and try to repaint it I'm going to take advantage of the layers Taking off a little tiny spot, and you say, "Why? Why are you gonna go into that intricate of details?" It's, it's the way I am. <laughs> it's the way I am. I love it. I love detail. I love uh, little tiny, tiny details. God puts such details in our lives. Paint them. <laughs> Now where I scratched again, I'm going to miss back over that. Now I got three layers of paint on there. and But where I've scratched back into it, I'm back to the original value in that little spot. Same with over here. I'm going to tone these back on that top edge. And there go my dogs. That's Rascal you're hearing in the background. Rascal, quiet! It's raining outside now. Told you that pressure was changing. Alright. I'm 
I've got another spot I want to bring out a little bit. This time I'm going to use a soft eraser. And it's, a, it's just a little tiny spot in here. Now this had gray on it from the other day. So it should be secure down to the, the illustration paper, but it's not. Okay, I'm going to switch to my Tombow because it's not one to pull up some of that paint. Okay, and it's starting to remove a little bit of that because there's a little highlight in here that I wanted to come across with. It's not really coming out of there. I'm going to switch to the aggressive eraser. Now I got that on there, and now so it's not too bright, I'm going to go back in with my green over that spot. And I'm going to spray that in. There, little tiny, tiny spot. You like that? Why paint? Why paint like that? Because I can. Because I enjoy it. And that's what airbrushing's all about and painting and artwork. It's all because we enjoy it. Now there's also a lot of green coming in on top of this red. So we can mist in a little bit of green on top of there. And there goes my compressor. Building, what we're doing is we're building up depth in the piece so it's not it appears to be a three-dimensional image rather than in all actuality two-dimensional it's creating the illusions I'm gonna miss a little bit of this green on top of these to knock them back a little bit And what being this transparent, I've got the ability to mix colors right on top of my image. That ruby red throat, I just put in some shadowing, just spraying a little bit of green on that, on that red. Now we can also do another thing here with this paint. We can mix in a little bit of opaque white, just a tiny touch of it, and it'll make this color opaque. And you can go over this and get an opaque color over the top of it. The only thing with doing that is you will get color shift. So I'm just looking at my photo reference scene where I want to go back in. and define a little more of the shadow areas. Darken this up. And underneath here, it's really darker under here. I'm doing a real fine edge, real fine line detail. And then up here, this isn't so brown, but I made it a little bit too brown. And that's okay. Use what you put down there. Make it yours. As you can see, I'm getting pretty good fine details. I just got to be careful about how I spray this. Okay, this up here on the beak is a little more 
darker value and it's a little grungier uh, color and there goes that little spit sound which tells me my brush is starting to tip dry on me so that's mainly going to be the focus today uh, I'm not gonna bore you with a big long video I just wanted to give you a little bit right here I'm just hitting the edges of those and I'm pumping that trigger like I said just a little bit Well, I hope you've enjoyed this, I, uh, and I hope I've helped you learn a little bit. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm not going to shut it off now. I'm going to mix in some blue into this green that's already in my cup, and a little bit of sepia smoke, because I want to put a little blue over that. Uh, yeah, just blue. I don't want to use blue violet. So I'm going to take a little cobalt bolt, blue. Oh, oh. I'm going to put my needle cap over this so I don't smack my needle by mistake. Give it a good shake with my bottle. opening it to the side because there goes that paint shooting out of it. Boy oh boy do I hate when it does that. It drives me nuts because I get paint everywhere on my fingers. I've had it shoot out where it bubbles onto stuff so I'm gonna put three three drops of blue in here. One, two, Three, three drops. Clean off my bottle. And then, like I said, I'm going to put a little sepia smoke in there. Now, I already mixed that once. I don't know if you can see, but where it made that little hiss and that little spit, I got little dots there that I got to clean off again. So, you got to pay attention to that. Now I don't want to go too dark on this value, so I'm going to have two drops of the sepia in there. Sepia uh, won't overpower your color too much. It'll darken it. Okay. And give a little mix with that brush. Be careful you don't lift the brush out. I've done this too. I've lifted the brush and flung paint onto the painting and <laughs> that is not a fun thing to try to clean up and fix. Alright, a little back pressure. Spraying through the brush. Alright. Let's give it a little test here and see where our color is on this piece of white paper towel. Ah, that gives us a nice dark green. And you can see that. And I'm going to go back into this dark fur area. Or fur. I'm going to go into this. Just a few spots to create some more depth this dark green on these feathers on these edges okay. hey, you could go in with black if you wanted but you know I'm fairly dark on here so I can mix in this green and use it I'm going to clean that tip. Clean, clean, clean. 
so we don't have a disaster on our hands. Just little pumping actions. Now, as you can see, what well, used to be dark now looks a little bright. Well, it's hard to see in there. I'll uh, zoom in on the camera so you can get a better idea of what's going on in there. I'm building my edges of my feathers here. and darkening spots. Okay, and there's some nice little tiny details in here. Couple little ones in here where I put that browns. Clean that tip. Darken this edge. And if it doesn't want to spray for you, don't keep pulling that trigger back. Resist that temptation. Been there, done it. Many, many years. You really got to resist that. Otherwise, you could have a disaster if that little dried spot lets go and you got that needle tip pulled back that far. Oh boy, you will have a spider web on your painting that you will regret. You want to shoot yourself for doing it. But don't do that. It's not worth it. It's a painting. All right. A lot, a lot of little, little details in there. going to go into this head before we end this video. And we're going to redefine some of the real darks in that fur on the head. And what this is doing is this is making that lighter green just jump out. As you can see I'm cleaning that tip again. So that, see how much easier that sprayed? Scaring myself. I'm just hitting some of these spots in the head that are darker. Because the transparent green and blue that I just mixed is blending with that brown underneath and making almost the illusion of a black paint. Now you could just mix in some black, but I don't like to use black unless I absolutely have to. Right, I see another spot here that cleaning that tip before I start spraying on my painting. back a little bit. That 
head is really coming to life and there's a little mist of green into here. I don't want a lot. Whoa. Good thing I was pointed away. I don't know if you heard that, but it gave a little shot there. Now I can go back in. Yeah, see that? That little spray gave me a little shot of paint on there. I'm going back into the wingtip where that has dried now. And taking off that little dot of paint. And this is one of the things that drove. See how that just did that? It smeared. You can see a little bit on the camera. That's why you got to resist doing it too soon. You do it later, you can lift that spot right off. And if you are working on paper, forget it. Or illustration board, that would have just soaked right into that illustration board. And you'd have a sm spot there that's not going to come off. So I got to give that time to uh, dry up a little bit. And then I can pick that off or erase it, whatever need be. There's a spot there that was wet and I don't seem to have that problem with my uh, with my ETAC. It does not spit like that and it's just with the illustration co colors that I have here. I don't know if it's because this is old illustration colors. I've had these for a couple of years since I ordered it way, way back when. I got a little, little too much overspray, I just noticed in here, but what I'm doing is I'm defining the highlights on the next layer of feathers. I want to stay away from those spots because I don't want to smudge them and make it a worse cleanup. But we're learning as we go. I'm learning how to deal with it so I can use this paint. And uh, there's a grainy, a little graininess to this paint. But I've found that with others also. Right now I'm just working out a few highlights in this under part since I got some overspray on it and I misted it before it sits too long. I'm just erasing some highlights into that. The feathers are... I don't know. Can that... I don't know if that helps. It's hard to tell on my camera how bright that is. I have to change my position here. And let's take a look. Oh no, you can see it. Yeah. Sitting where I was, it looked way darker. All right. Let's back out here. Give you a little shot there. So you can see what I was working on. Let's pan this over a little bit. It's going to get bumpy. Whoa. Wrong way, cameraman. Hey, okay. let's get this up a little bit. And now I got to turn this so you can see it. Hey, beautiful. And you can see all the little intricate details in through here and up here and where I layered that around that eye. Right. 
All right, going back out here. I have a seat here. Okay, everybody. Back out. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this little session that we did together here. And for anybody who wants to know, this is a daylight uh, lamp. It's an easel lamp that I got through uh, one of the art stores around here. Um, really helps. It's I think it's a 5,500 Kelvin uh, daylight bulb. So it gives me better accuracy for mixing my colors and uh, keeping my paintings a little truer to their actual uh, color and tone and value. I hope you enjoyed this. I've enjoyed this little bit of time, and uh, if you like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and uh, I'll try to do more of these as I go, and uh, tell me if you like it, leave a response, I always welcome comments, if there's something extra that you feel you need to know, put it in the comment, and uh, I'll try to do a video on it so that you can uh, learn. We learn together. And uh, I just thank God that I've had this opportunity to share with you guys out there and uh, that it's helped you. Uh, remember, be a blessing to others and bless others with the ability you've been given and share it that others may grow. Take care, have a wonderful day. This has been Papa's Painting Tips. So let Papa help you. Again, I'm Fred Wagner. Have a great day.